tough till the very last game for the Yankees to clinch a playoff berth, but they did it in walk-off fashion, no less. And even the series was just a microcosm of the Yankees season where so many ebbs and flows, so many peaks and valleys. But at the end of the day, they were punched in the mouth quite a bit and they were able to get up and they did it again here and they avoided what would have really been a very unideal situation with them potentially having to play a tiebreaker game against Toronto. Um, As it turned out, if the Yankees had lost, they would have had to have played Toronto just to uh, just to play Boston uh, in the wild card game. So they avoided playing that extra game. What unfortunately did happen as a result of the Yankees fucking up, which they did this weekend, um, was the fact that now the wild card game against Boston will be at Fenway, which is kind of what I suspected would happen. But you w- you were hoping that with the Yankees up two games going into the you know the last three games that they would have maybe found a way to not lose two games to Boston. That's exactly what they did. Boston swept, and the Yankees, you know, hung on to win the last game against Tampa. So. Not a huge, huge deal. I really would have liked for that game to be at Yankee Stadium to have the crowd, you know, behind them. But look, they did sweep uh, at Boston um, just as recently as last weekend. So again, like I think that my enthusiasm is slightly, slightly tempered, but it really sh- it shouldn't be all that much for that reason because it's still going to be one game regardless of of anything, and it could have been a lot worse. If the Yankees had gotten swept. It would have been a disaster in many, many ways. So, But I think one thing is also very clear here, and that that is the fact that Tampa Bay is going to be such a daunting task. For the Yankees to get past Tampa, they're going to have to have everything working. And ah, the the good thing is that it's only a best of five, not a best of seven series. So the fact that it's a best of five, again, less of a sample size, that the Yankees were able to push it to five games last year against Tampa. But I think that this Tampa team is arguably, certainly offensively better. Um, and, and, and a huge key is, is just in terms of the wild card game and moving forward is what is Garrett Cole going to give you? Garrett Cole, I think we know that he's capable of pitching a masterpiece. Like he has that within him. But we also know that he's not as – that there's been major inconsistencies and recently too. He usually – after a bad outing, he usually steps up in the next one. And I would expect a good outing from Garrett Cole. I, I do. Um, but, oh my God, I mean Yankees, Red Sox – at Boston for a chance to advance, loser goes home. It's that's going to get a lot of ratings. Uh, ESPN is definitely going to get a lot of you know heavily, heavily concentrated ratings. Um, really across the country, I think Yankees Red Sox. I think speaks to just more than the Yankee Red Sox fan base. I think you know it is the um, one of the greatest rivalries in sports, and for it to be played at Fenway Park, uh, I, I think you really couldn't ask for a better. Uh, scenario, and I think baseball is definitely very happy about the way that that played out. You know, real quick, we're going to go through the the Rays series, and DJ LeMayu, it's one of the first things I want to mention. DJ LeMayu, um, before the, the last game, was placed on the injured list. Sounds like it's going to be a situation where, at best, he'd be back if the Yankees advance to, like, the ALCS. And so what that what that is going to mean is... Even though he was clearly compromised and this wasn't like the DJ LeMay of old, that's that's going to be rough. I mean, what that pretty much means now, as far as I can tell it, is that like Rudnett Odor is probably going to be getting like everyday third base reps. Now, I guess that won't always be the case. You could, it could, Andrew Velasquez was called up. So I would assume Velasquez and we'll, I guess, you know, we'll consider who's going to be on that 26 man postseason roster and, and and who you see in that Boston game will be different than what you see in a five game series a one game roster is going to feature definitely different variables and so I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see some players you wouldn't normally expect certainly but I guess the the case is is that they like Tyler Wade off the bench and I understand that he he had the game winning run actually uh in, in the clinching game but it's it's a big downgrade. Um, so the Yankees, they're hurting right now. Um, you know, Luke Voigt, who this is a situation independent of Luke Voigt, but he's out for the season. He And like I said, it was a lost season for him. It ended up being an injured list situation. Um, and so he's not in the mix either. So, but, but as far as this series, 
uh, with the Rays, it was Nestor Cortez, who did what Nestor Cortez normally does, and that's keep the Yankees in the ball game. He he went four and two thirds. He gave up two earned runs. He gave up a home run in the first to, to Nelson Cruz, and, and you know all, most of the scoring the scoring in this game was in the very beginning and the very end. Um, Shane McClanahan, the Yankees got him in the first, so Nelson Cruz homers in the top of the first, and in the bottom. It would be a leadoff double for Labor Torres, and Torres uh, was batting leadoff all series, so I would expect that to continue. You might see Brett Gardner there, uh, depending on the scenario, but I think Torres is more likely actually just to stay at the number one spot. So Torres would sing, uh, would double, and then eventually with two outs, it would be uh, Giancarlo Stan with an RBI single. Um, and so that made it 1-1, one, one, but then in the second... It would be uh, sort of a, a fortunate run for the Rays, but they're very op- the Rays are so opportunistic. It would be a one-out single for Manny Margot off of Cortez's glove. It was unfortunate. Cortez couldn't field it cleanly, and that enabled Margot, who's fast, to reach. And then um, with two outs, Francisco Mejia hits a shot down the line, and Ruben Odor does a good job of stopping it, but then he loses control and he can't throw it. So can't blame Odor there too much. I mean, could Gio have made that play? Very well possibly. But then Kevin Kiermaier, who was, you know, some of the Yankees could not get out. The number nine hitter gets a gets an RBI single um, on an 0-2 pitch, and that um, would make it 2-1. And and it would stay that way for a very, very long time, actually until the ninth inning. And, and McClanahan only went three innings. This was a bullpen game for Tampa, and that usually works out well for the Rays. Uh, most of Major League Baseball can't hit their pitching, and especially the Yankees can't either. And so Fairbanks would pitch a scoreless fourth. Then... You know, in terms of the Yankees in the fifth, Clay Holmes would come on uh, and strike out a Rosarena for uh, for Cortez after Cortez gave up a triple to Kiermaier. Then uh, Lewis Head would pitch a scoreless fifth and a scoreless sixth and would actually pitch into the seventh. So Head did really well for Tampa. And Wandy Peralta would replace Holmes. He would get the job done. Um, and Wandy Peralta, I-, I think he's really... Uh, been, you know, we, we, we kind of forget the fact that he was traded for Mike Talkman, and that was a really good trade because Talkman, I don't believe, I think he's, I think he's with AAA with San Francisco, uh, and Wandy Peralta served a very large role for the Yankees. So the pitching, you know, we'll talk about the pitching in the series. Other than the, the game two starter, we'll talk about him. The pitching was fantastic, as it's been for most of the season. So Josh Fleming would come in for Tampa. He would finish out that seventh inning. Um, pitching for the Yankees in the seventh would be Jonathan Loisega, uh, who replaced Wandy Peralta, and he would get the job done as he struck out Juan DeFranco, who was a great young player. Um, and then Domingo Herman would come in in the eighth, pitch a scoreless eighth. Fleming would pitch a, a scoreless eighth as well. And then in the top of the ninth, Herman would unfortunately walk Mejia and Kiermaier, Kiermaier again, with one out. And so they would bring on Albert Abreu. And this is where... Herman and Abreu in this spot was not the right move. I I would have gone Chad Green. I mean, you, you could have won Chapman, but like I think Chad Green would have made sense in the spot. Um, or I guess even Severino, too. Like, I just think you were kind of not, not giving up on the game, but you were thinking too far ahead, not living in that moment. And it, and it came back to bite. And so, so Albert Abreu uh, would, would get a Rosarena to ground out. And so that would make it first and third with two out. And a Rosarena was still second, so it became second and third, and it was a long at bat with Juan Franco, which Franco would win. Franco gets a two-run single off of Abreu, and it, it, they put Abreu in a very tough spot. They did, and he almost was able to get out of it. But the Herman Abreu thing, I disagree with that completely, and it would come back to call, to bite them, as in the bottom of the ninth, Andrew Kittredge would come on, and John Carlos Stanton would double with one out. He would advance the third on defensive indifference. And then Joey Gallo did a very smart thing. He would get a bunt RBI single. They gave it to him. You're down by three. It was the right thing to do, and I'm glad that he did it. Very unselfish, smart move by Gallo. And so that would make it 4-2. Then Gio Rochella would single. And Gio has been really coming on lately. Gio, he's, we're, we're starting to see, you know, the Gio that we've been accustomed to since he's been a Yankee. So Gio would make it first and second. Tyler Wade would pinch run for Rochella. And then Brett Gardner gets an RBI single, makes it 4-3, first and second, with one out. And Wade did not go to third. I would have liked him to try to. He didn't. And honestly, it may not have even made a difference because what ends up happening is Gary Sanchez pinched it for Higashioka. I didn't want them to. I didn't want them to. Gary Sanchez, it's all, he always finds a way for you to not want him in there. 
And let's be clear, Kyle Agashioka, while he's had some big moments, and while he, you know, he's a pretty good defensive catcher, he's nothing special, but you'd still rather him in there than Gary Sanchez. I mean, I want this guy off the team. Uh, I'm just... I'm just done with him, and I understand that some might find that as blasphemy, um, that he is one of the best power-hitting catchers in baseball, and that he is better than most catchers. And yeah, sure, that might be true. It's just more, it's just kind of, it's run its course. And so I'm pretty much done with him, and, and what would he do? He would strike out, and he looked terrible in the process. And then Rudnett Odor is up, and Rudnett Odor, he was basically, a, he wasn't, in, I feel like for the last month or so, Rudnett Odor has not been in the mix at all. Now he's thrust into a situation where he's it seems like he's going to be starting just about every game again you could go Velasquez but Odor he would strike out so Sanchez and Odor with a chance to clinch a playoff spot would strike out and I guess at the time they didn't know that it'd be because Seattle would eventually lose that night so if they had won it wouldn't have been like a celebration on the field type of thing but you know um, it certainly if they had won that game then the Yankees would have been hosting this wild card game and not going to Boston so it was a really you know, uh, a rough way to end the game. It's too bad they gave up those two runs in the top of the ninth. And then, you know, for Sanchez and Odor not to come through in the bottom of the ninth, just a, a really a stinging loss. Um, and so game two, not, not a whole lot to talk about in game two. Jordan Montgomery got absolutely fucking pummeled. And Montgomery, uh, this was a, a, a major disappointment. He's someone that, like, if they make it deep in the playoffs, he's going to be in the mix. He, he will be, um, at least I think he will be. I mean, I guess if we're technically speaking, he doesn't have to be, but you, but he will. And Montgomery, you know, he gives up uh, two, he would give up two three-run homers to Brandon Lau. And one of them was in the first inning. So like, you're already behind the eight ball immediately. And Velasquez would, would start in this one. So Odor started in the first game. Velasquez would start in the second one. Um Higashioka had started the first game, you know, where Sanchez pinch hit. Sanchez would start the second one. So Montgomery just gets absolutely crushed. And so it's a three-run homer by Brandon Lau. Then Rizzo, uh, Anthony Rizzo, who, you know, had some good moments uh, in this series, he would homer uh, in the bottom of the first. But uh, it wouldn't matter because in the top of the third, it would be a three-run homer for Lau and then a solo homer for Zanino. So it's 7-1 and, and Montgomery comes out of the game. And Lick, Lucas Licky, give him credit. Licky and Joely Rodriguez, they kind of saved the pen. Licky ends up going three innings. He would give up one run. Michael King would unfortunately come on, and King actually didn't pitch all that well, though it's a little misleading as Joely Rodriguez would give up a three-run homer to Austin Meadows, which would and that would be, you know, it would be King's runs. But it ended up being risky because King pitched, and he might have been a factor in that third game, luckily the Yankees won and it worked out very well, but that was a really bad thing, the fact that they needed to use Michael King. I don't – they should have avoided that at all costs. But even with that being said, Licky went three innings and threw 53 pitches, and Joely Rodriguez went three innings and threw 38. So give them a lot of credit. The only other thing of note in this game was really lazy stuff from Gleyber Torres where – there would be a, a wild pitch or a pass ball, and he just kind of jogged to first, and he was out. They were down by 10 runs at the time. I believe it was the seventh inning, and Glaber Torres just uh, – we've seen this too much from him. Lackadaisical play, just uh, – he's better than that, and it's, it's, an, it's just one of those things. It's hard to stand after a while, and, and, and part of it was unawareness, and sometimes Glaber's IQ is, is actually sometimes not terrible – and, and other times, it's it's awful. There's really no in-between. So, But long story short, the Yankees lose 12-2. And so they go into the last day of the regular season, and, and the situation was this. They were tied with Boston, and Toronto and Seattle were a game behind them. Fast forward, Toronto was killing Baltimore. So the Yankees needed to win this game. Otherwise, they were going to be playing uh, like game 163. So it's great the Yankees were able to somehow win. What happened is, you know, Boston, the Yankee game finished before the Boston game, and Boston was losing 5-1 to Washington. But the Nationals are not a good team, and Boston was able to find a way to come back and win that game. But but that, you know, so at the time, when the Yankees had won this game, you know, there was a thought that the Yankees, you know, would have a chance to host the, the Tuesday game. But with that, it's kind of an interesting caveat. And, and what it would have been is that Boston would have played – Toronto uh, would have played Toronto and it came out Jeff Passon reported that um, if there had been a four-way tie 
the way it would have worked out is Boston and Toronto would have hosted those games against either the Yankees or Seattle. And the Yankees chose Boston. If it, if it did happen, the Yankees chose Boston over Toronto, which I think kind of makes sense. Could it be built? Could it be bolts and board material for Boston? Like for Tuesday? Yes, it could be. But um, the Yankee preference is to play the Red Sox. Um, and so but my point is that if the Red Sox did lose, the one bad thing that could have come of that is that the Yankees would have maybe eventually played Toronto. But the good thing about that would have been that Boston Toronto would have had to have, you know, exerted all the you know energy and had, would have had to have burnt pitchers on the Monday game. So I would have preferred the Boston loss. But one could argue that there that if you wanted to play Boston over Toronto at all costs, you could argue that Boston winning that last game as a good thing. Uh, I mean that's fair. But but as it pertains to Tampa Yankees, the Yankees just could not get – the Yankees had one hit through eight innings. So the Yankees ended up with four hits, three of them in the ninth. And Jamison Tyone, give him a lot of props because he – we thought that maybe he was going to be done for the season. He got hurt against – or he re-injured his ankle against Toronto earlier in the week. But he was able to gut it out, and he ended up going three and a third scoreless innings. Only you know, two hits, one walk. Uh, really, kudos to Tyone. It set the Yankees in motion pitching wise, and it would go from Tyone to Wandy Peralta, Clay Holmes, Chad Green, Lawazica, Chapman, and they and no runs, no runs against them. All those guys deserve a lot of credit. And, and like I said, you know, Wandy Peralta has really been uh, an unsung hero in this bullpen, uh, much to my surprise. Uh, Clay Holmes has just been filthy for the most part since he's come from Pittsburgh. Chad Green, Chad Green, when he's not in late late game situations. Uh, is not terrible. Uh, I, I don't think Yankee fans really trust him, but but I also think that um, you know he's not a bad pitcher. He just needs to be put in the right situation. And then Jonathan Lawazaga would really come through in a major way uh, as he would be in a runner on third, one out situation where he would strike out Nelson Cruz to hold that runner, and then he would get Austin Meadows to fly out. So that was really big. But the Yankees in this game, uh, you know, Michael Waka, uh, who has not done well this season. Waka goes five innings scoreless, and just the Yankee offense, especially with no Lemayu now, I'm not loving what I'm seeing. You know, I, I think Joey Gallo. I think we know what we're getting with him. It is. I mean, Geo has been kind of coming alive a bit lately, and sometimes you do get contributions from likes of Brett Gardner, and you know, Glaber. I guess has been okay. He has been okay lately, but uh, the point is, is that I think that this offense is gonna is gonna be problematic, especially if they somehow get to that Tampa series. I don't see how they're gonna be all that successful. They really need this pitching to be great, and sometimes it is. But I guess, I mean, Tampa would go. Tampa was 0 for 11 runners in scoring position. And the Yankees were two for two. So the Yankees just kind of the pitching was extremely clutch. They were able to bear down in many many situations. All all six of those guys. Not to get into the play-by-play, let's just jump straight to the bottom of the ninth. Um, and it would be uh, Josh Fleming, the lefty, and Rugnet Odor. Rugnet Odor, who has had a lot of big moments for the Yankees this year, he would have a leadoff single um, against the lefty. And that would uh, necessitate Tyler Wade to pinch run. And so Wade would pinch run for Odor, and he... Um, it was important that he did, and it was the right move. And Glaber Torres would fly out deep, and Wade... Heads up base running as he would tag and go to second. So it's runner on second, one out. And Fleming faces Anthony Rizzo. And Anthony Rizzo rips the ball to right for a base hit. But it was hit so hard and the Rosarina has such a good arm that they held weight at third. Um, and, uh, and on the throw home, Rizzo goes to second. So it's second and third, one out. And they bring in Andrew Kittredge, who's been one of the best relievers in baseball. Second and third. And again, Rizzo, uh, he could have been the hero, but he wasn't. Uh, he, he hit the ball too hard. Um, not not his fault, of course. And so Aaron Judge is up. And I, I thought in that situation, I, like Tampa Bay, you know, they go about things differently and their process is different. If I were them, I would have personally walked him and, and I would have went after Stanton, bases loaded. I mean, even though Stanton's been great lately, but I would have taken my chances with Stanton. And I, and I think, you know, and then Gallo would have been on deck. So either way, they don't. And Judge, who... We need to give him credit for the fact that I think he's cut down on the strikeouts this year. Does he strike out a lot still? Yes. Uh, that's just the type of player he is. But he's, he's really cut down on it, and he is able to make contact on a 2-2 pitch. He hits he hits a ground ball, goes off of Kittredge's glove, and Brandon Lau feels it, throws home, but Wade would be safe. And so give credit for Aaron Judge for putting the ball in play, not striking out, and the Yankees win. Uh, they go nuts. They celebrate. Um 
and a long season. The Yankees finished 92 and 70, and they do reach the playoffs. Um, would you have wanted to win the division? Of course. But I think if they can at least get past Boston, in some ways, it's 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 a bit of a no harm, no foul situation. Like if you can just get past this wild card game, and I think it's going to be tough. It's going to be Garrett Cole versus Nate Valdi, which is a rematch of um, of that first game. It was a Friday night game at Fenway Park um, last Friday, and the Yankees got the better of Evaldi. Um They really got him good. So I think that you got to like the pitching matchup if Garrett Cole could be Garrett Cole, which which is at this point, you know, uh, something that we don't know. Um, and I, like I said, I would have loved for it to be Yankee Stadium, but it'll be at Fenway Park. But we will have, an, we will certainly have an episode uh, after that Yankee Red Sox game. This is going to be intense. It's going to be fun. And again, with the rivalry being what it is, and um, the Yankees and Red Sox have had some great battles over the years. And I would expect nothing less than for this to be just an epic, epic game. But hopefully the Yankees will find a way to advance and you know and, and be on their way to Tampa. But we'll see what happens. Again, uh, the Yankees find a way uh, to clinch a playoff berth after what was one of the craziest seasons I can remember. And so let's hope that this playoff journey is more than one game and that the Yankees can find a way to get hot. And so it all begins Tuesday at Fenway versus the Red Sox.